Hello pilots of the internet, Red Bull Paper Wings has finally concluded and I have to say it was an absolutely amazing experience that I will honestly never forget. There were 150 participants selected from over 60,000 people who competed in this competition at the local and national levels and they represented 57 different countries at the global finals. And as amazing as the competition was, which the competition truly was amazing, it was meeting these people who share the same passion that I do that was easily the best part of the experience. And today I wanna to introduce you to one of those people, but not just anyone. This is the 2022 Red Bull Paper Wings Aerobatics Champion, Sung Hoon Lee of South Korea, who I now count as a personal friend and I'm certainly his fan. He blew my mind with his performance in the aerobatics category. And today we're going to be folding a boomerang plane that he used in his performance. And he's gonna teach you how to throw it. I'll teach you how to fold it. So we better get into the video. Another say, we play. Hello pilots. I am Sung Hoon Lee from South Korea. I have been a fan of this channel for years and I'm very happy to be here. So as a present, I'm going to show you how to throw a boomerang like a pro. You use only your body with your arms fixed. So it's a vertical stage here. You never hold a boomerang like this. It must be vertical. And then wind up, shoot, it will come back like this. You can actually use the same boomerang to go backwards using this trick, like this. Wow, it looks like magic, right? Now, let me see. Here I have two boomerangs. The forward one, and then the back one that actually can spin you around like 360 degrees. Now this is like a master level. You can now use three boomerangs. With these two, three boomerangs, I can do a trick that looks like this. See, when you master them, you can do, you can imagine like many tricks, just like me. Holy cow, dude, take a bow for that performance. Thank you so much for demonstrating your skills to all of my viewers. I obviously do not have that kind of performative skill, but what I can do is turn a paper airplane that looks like this into a paper airplane that looks like this. So if you support me on patreon.com slash foldable flight, you can download and print off this template to fold a plane that looks way cooler than the original. And there are over 60 other templates there as well. So for just $4 a month, that's a great deal. And with that out of the way, let's get folding. Crescent Boomerang is actually a plane that is very easy to fold in terms of its step-by-step -step process, but precision is really important if you want this to circle back to you consistently. Now, Sung Hoon Lee does have his own YouTube channel, so if you enjoy folding this plane, I would highly encourage you to click that card in the top right corner and head over to his channel and give him a new subscriber because he creates amazing paper airplane content. Now, you're going to need an A4 sheet of paper or you're going to have to trim three quarters of an inch off your eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper in order to arrive at those A4 proportions. You're also going to need a ruler and you're going to need a pencil. And a second ruler would actually be really helpful as well. So if you have one of those, you might go ahead and grab it. Now I will be presenting measurements as we go along and there will be converted measurements if you did have to cut your eight and a half by 11 sheet down I'll place those on the screen. So with all of that out of the way, let's begin folding this plane. You're going to start by folding the right edge to the left edge, as we so often do. And then once you've done that, you can go ahead and open your paper up so that this is a mountain crease. And now we're going to fold these triangles in at the top and leave just a little millimeter gap between this edge and the center crease. And you're gonna do that on both sides. So your plane should look like this. 
And we're now going to measure here along this center crease from the back edge of the plane, you want this to be 5.3 centimeters. So that's 53 millimeters from the back edge. We're making a little mark on our center crease. And now I'm just going to fold the top point of my plane to that mark that I just made. Okay, and now we're going to fold triangles at the top again, once again, leaving the little millimeter gap between this edge of paper and the center crease. Right like so, do the same thing on the other side. And now we can go ahead and open both of those up and you're folding the outer edge to that crease you just made, but again, leave just a little gap between the edge of the paper and that crease. And now we can fold in on those existing creases, just like so, gently flatten these out. And now you want to fold your top point up as far as it can go and land it on the center crease. So it should trap these layers at either side, just like so. And now we are ready to fold it in half along that center crease away from ourselves. And we're going to do a little measuring before we make our wing creases. So I'm looking here, I've got one centimeter right at the front of my ruler. And basically I want to hold my ruler perpendicular to this bottom edge and find the point where that one centimeter, uh, this edge here intersects my one centimeter line. And then I'm just going to trace right there. So I know that this point here is one centimeter from my bottom edge. And now I'm going to go ahead and measure along the back edge as well. And in this case, I want to measure 2.4 centimeters. So I find it right there and I'm just making a little mark right on my back edge. And now my objective is to make a crease that runs right between those two points or from one point to another. So as I highlight it, you'll see, I'm planning to crease right along that line there. And this is one of the places where having a second ruler is actually going to come in handy in terms of making this crease really, really straight. And that's going to increase the consistency when you're throwing it. So I'm basically going to place one of my rulers right along that line, trying to place it correctly without putting my head in front of the camera for you guys. And then I'm going to slide my other ruler into the wings. I want it to be in between the two wings, if I can do that. Let's see, there we go. And now I'm going to align my rulers just like this and I can kind of pull up on the one that's behind. And that's going to help me make a really straight crease between those two points. And I can now kind of finalize that crease just like so. And you can see I'm really close to being right on that line that I marked. And now I can just flip it over and fold my second wing to match. I'm not going to use the rulers in this case because lining these up makes it nice and easy to place this crease correctly, and I just crease right across the top edge. Okay, and you can see what our plane looks like at this point. We are really close to being done. Now we want to measure for our winglets. So I'm going to just set my plane in this position here, and I want to measure, again, perpendicular from this edge right there. I'm just measuring up one centimeter. So here, I'll grab this ruler again. Find my one centimeter mark. Try not to put my head in front of the camera. Mark right there, and I'm doing that the same at the back as well. So I'm just going to crease between those two points, and again, you might find it useful to place one ruler on top and slide the other ruler in between your layers 
and kind of clamping it like this, you can just raise the one ruler and you don't have to make a really sharp crease here. You want it sharper than that. So I'm going to reinforce what I just did a little bit, but this helps you not end up with a wavy fin. You see how nice and straight that fin is? And that is one key again to increasing the consistency of the plane. And once I do one side, I can just fold the other side to match. Okay, so in terms of folding, we are done. So it's all to setting the correct wing alignment, the dihedral or anhedral of the plane, and bending the back edges up a little bit. And how much you bend the back edges up is kind of determined by how tightly you want it to circle. So if you do these nice kind of small bumps right at the middle, it's going to circle very widely, but it might not actually circle all the way back to you. So you may find that you have to do really small bends all the way along this back edge on both sides. So just be prepared to, you know, adjust that as you see fit as you're testing the plane and whether it's circling back to you tightly, whether you want it to uh, circle back to you in a wider fashion, that's going to do determine how much you bend those back edges. And the other thing is while you're holding the plane, you want the wings to be pretty flat along the back edge. You don't want anhedral or dihedral, but you'll notice when you let go of the plane, that means that they're going to sag into an anhedral position. If you find that your plane isn't circling back to you very well, you can increase the anhedral position a little bit, and that's going to reduce the stability of the plane, which leads to it kind of continuing its turn longer than it would otherwise. So something to experiment with there as well. So with all of that out of the way, thank you so much for watching this video. As always, I'll see you next time.